Hey guys, I'm um, going to update you on Annalise. She is two weeks old and one day. Um, she's doing really well. For the most part, very healthy baby, eating well, pooping like crazy. Um, she's good. She's gaining weight. We've had a couple of issues that have come up in the first two weeks of her life that we've been dealing with, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's been going on. Um, I'll start with the hearing. She failed the hearing test that they do the day after they're born and before they release you to go home. Her right ear passed wonderfully. I mean, it passed in two seconds flat. Like, literally, I think she had the thing in there for seven seconds and she said she was done. She passed. However, her left ear did not pass the test. We ran the regular test twice and then ran the one where they put the little electrodes on their forehead and then one behind their ear. And she ran that test twice. And again, she failed the test <clears throat> both times. Um, the test kind of sucks because you really have, you can't move. You have to hold completely still. And I had to hold her throughout the two times that she ran the test. And the test kind of takes a while to run. So <laughs> my arm was tired. My butt was numb from sitting in the same position in that dumb hospital bed. I was miserable and so happy when she was done with it. But, um... They said maybe, you know, she's a C-section baby, she probably has junk in her ear still. We'll give her two weeks, let that ear clear out a little bit and dry up. Because, you know, she's a C-section, not a vaginal birth. Vaginal birth, they get kind of squished and all extra fluids get squished out of them. Because she was a C-section, she didn't get that. And that was most likely what it was. So, yesterday morning, I took her down to audiology. And went and saw an actual audiologist and everything <clears throat> and um, they I think they ran that first test three times and each time that they stuck the little thing in her ear more vernix would come out I mean just big white chunks of vernix was coming out of her ear so <clears throat> ears still clogged up ears still full of junk uh, the lady that was running that test went and got an actual audiologist and had her come in and check it out with the otoscope and um, she said that she could see that there was more in there. Um, they tried massaging her ear to get more of it to come out and some of it did but still didn't get enough out. And plus their little ear things, Annalise is so little. She was six pounds at her two week well visit. She's tiny, and her ear canals are very, very small, so it makes it very, very difficult to get even the smallest of those little ear things into her ear. They decided to do the one again with the electrodes, but they didn't, they had the adult size electrodes there, and they didn't have the little tiny baby ones. So we got the one to stay on her forehead, but the other one kept falling off because her forehead isn't wide enough to create enough of a flat surface to put two electrodes. So the one kept peeling off, and they put the other one behind her ear, and again, can't move, so I have got her in my arm. My arm's dead asleep. I'm holding the electrode down with my other hand, so my, this arm and hand hurts from holding still. I was able to rock her at least, because they had a rocking chair there, in order to keep her asleep to run the test, because again, they don't want her moving around and stuff and making noise. She was making so much noise during the first test that they were having trouble running the test too, because she was too loud for the computer. <laughs> so anyway, we sat there forever it takes to run this one or that second test. Um, I almost fell asleep. The room was so quiet and so warm. We were rocking in that rocking chair and it takes forever to run the test. And there were a couple of times that I almost dozed off and, you know, sleep deprived mother of a two week old. <laughs> I kind of want to just take a nap. Um, she again failed the test. Uh, I talked to the audiologist. She said that she still believes it's just a matter of there being too much debris in her ear. A ton of vernix came out. Each time they ran the test after some came out, you could see that her hearing went up a little bit and got a little bit better. Um, she said it's still possible for there to be amniotic fluid behind the eardrum that could be causing some issues. All we can do, and plus she's so little that those electrodes wouldn't stay put and that it was hard to get a good reading from that test because of her size, because of the little Christmas tree is what she called it. 
a little Christmas tree earbud that they put in her ear, even that was too big for her ear. And that was the tiniest one they had. So all we can do is wait another month, give her some more time to grow, give that ear some more time to clear out, massage it every day, don't touch it otherwise. She said don't dig around in there, don't try and get anything out. The ear needs to drain and dry and clean out on its own. All you can do is massage to try and loosen that stuff up. And she showed me how to massage her ear. Um, but yeah, we go back in a month, we'll try again. We'll see if we can get a better test result out of her. Um, she said that the ear does react. There is some reaction to the test, so she's not completely deaf in that ear. She does hear. Um, loud voices and noises she can hear. Normal voices and noises she can hear. It's anything at a whisper level that Annalise is unable to hear right now. We don't know whether that's permanent or if it's just a matter of she's got crap in her ear. We won't know until everything gets cleared out and that ear looks clean and if at the, you know the next appointment the ear looks clean to her and she's still getting those readings then we will know that it is in fact a mild hearing loss and not just the debris worst case scenario she said absolute worst case scenario she has a very mild hearing loss in her left ear again she can hear loud noises normal noises she just can't hear whispers but her right ear is very healthy and hears very well and she has no doubt that that right ear would very easily compensate for the hearing loss in the left ear and she may never really notice any difference in hearing than you and I would who hear normally. So all we can do is wait. Worst case scenario, very mild hearing loss, not a big deal. I'm really not worried. Obviously, as a mother, I want my baby to be perfect. I want her to hear perfectly. I want her to have no issues and no concerns and everything to be perfect and wonderful and healthy. I understand that doesn't always happen. Obviously, <laughs> I've been down that road a little bit here and there with my other kids. Um, but really, it's not that big of a deal. A mild hearing loss, not the end of the world. We love her no matter what. We accept whatever issue comes along. We just want the best for her and hopefully it'll all clear up in a month and this will be over and it'll just be a story we tell her when she's you know 15 and a brat <laughs> but um yeah all we can do is wait hopefully it gets better if not that's okay we'll be fine she'll be fine it's not that big of a deal thankfully so that was that's yeah, so what we got until now until she's six weeks old and then we'll go back and see what else we can find out about the hearing Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.